Good afternoon, everyone. Andy Jacob here with the Dot Com Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series. This is the show I've been waiting for for a number of weeks. We have a worldwide expert in staffing, and her company is called KD Staffing. Her name is Kelly Christina. She's the CEO and founder. She's a best selling author. She's been uh, an award winner in so many different arenas. I have so many questions for Kelly. It's great to have her on the show. You know, at the dot com magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series, we like to bring you the best of the best. So, booking Kelly is, uh, is really remarkable. Kelly, thanks so much for coming on the dot com magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series today. Uh, Andy Jacob, thank you for having me. And I'm so excited for this interview. I am too, Kelly. And as you can tell at home, Kelly has absolutely no personality and she's definitely sort of a downer when you talk to her and she has no energy at all. Of course, just (laughs) kidding. This is the way in which she's been able to build a great company. But Kelly, let's pull the lens back to 30,000 feet and tell us about KD Staffing to get started. Okay, I would love to tell you about KD Staffing. Um, Okay, so we were founded, Andy, in 2007. And um, of course, uh, my own career that I absolutely love, I'm 20 years into medical staffing. And um, we staff, um, of course, we're a contingency firm. Um, We staff permanent medical professionals. Andy, sometimes we do locally. And believe it or not, we spend a lot of time moving our medical professionals from state to state. Um, I often tell my own recruitment team, when I think of the medical industry, Andy, um, I think, uh, or the medical professionals, um, they're the caretakers of the world, okay? They're taking care of health care with our family and our loved ones. Well, Andy, in the job process and the transition process, somebody has to caretake the medical professionals, and that's Team KD Staffing. I love it. So you're the caretaker for the caretakers. That makes all the sense in yes. the world. So let's talk about it. Where is the staffing necessary the most? Are hospitals having a tough time, private health companies having a tough time staffing? Where is the big uh, um, need for all of this staffing that you're able to provide into the medical field? Andy, that's a great question. Um, So staffing, primarily our um, clients are the hospitals. However, we do um, with medical practices, and sometimes we have the independent ERs or the urgent cares that are using the nursings and the directors and the managers, and um, we're a specific niche. Um, Now, um, a lot of people don't know about this about staffing, but the the industry and whole staffing is, last time I looked over, what, 200 billion? Um, And so there's different areas of staffing, Andy. Um, We come in on the permanent side, um, and then, of course, the, we're, we're looking at the long-term st- stable employees that want to keep their jobs for a while. Um, then, of course, I started my career on the travel side. And often, you know, during crisis or short times, they'll bring in the short-term 13, 26-week travelers. And that's a different segment. Does that answer wow. your question? Go ahead. It really, it really does, Kelly. Obviously, you have an expertise both in the short term and the long term. But right now at KD Staffing, you're specializing in the long term. So let's talk about it. Are there certain parts of the company or certain parts of the country that use a company like KD Staffing more than other parts of the country? Or is this a universal need throughout the United States? Well, um, Andy, uh, you know, you will find sometimes in prime areas um, in our country, um, they can take care of a lot of the staffing themselves. Um, I think traditionally, the way I've looked at it now, Andy, I've recruited 49 out of 50 states. So I know state to state. um, And then you're uh, always looking at the cost of living and how does each state pay. Um, but um, we tend to pick up more um, and you'll find um, in the states and the areas that are a little bit maybe medium to smaller community. Um, and, um, you know, typically um, the HRs at the hospitals, they are they've got a lot to do and they need at, uh, help with those additional hard to fill needs. But you will find um, in the remote in more remote areas, um, they tend to use staffing companies a little bit more. 
That makes all the sense in the world, Kelly. You know, a small to mid-sized community, I would imagine that their long-term health care providers, like the physicians that they reach out to KD staffing to try and bring in, or the nurses or other health care professionals, are so important to those small communities. So I would imagine, Kelly, when you're able to place someone in a small community, that must feel great for you and your entire staff at KD Staffing, knowing that you're helping the community with their health care needs. Is that the way you feel about it? Um, I absolutely what we do, love what we do out there, Andy. Um, and, um, you know, my team is trained. Um, we are there for hard to fill. OK, so you're never going to be able to give me the excuses. I'm sorry, this area is too small or we can't sell this area. Andy, our job is to sell that area. Now, while I'm talking about that, when I work and we've got a lot of long term clients, but it's our level of service. All right. Um, but um, on the recruitment side or working with the clients, I will traditionally ask more upfront questions from my clients. OK, because it's not our job to hand a hiring manager 10 or 15 sloppy resumes. Our job is to pre-screen, pre-screen, pre-qualify, and sell that job. When you're selling a job, you're selling the community, the schools, the healthcare system, the benefits, and um, you've got to have all that information up front so that people can make educated decisions on jobs and locations. Kelly, I love that answer. It makes all the sense in the world, and it's really the reason why KD Staffing really stands head and shoulders above many of the other staffing companies throughout the United States because, like you said, you really vet the potential candidates. You really try and make a match. You're really a matchmaker, and the reason why is because you want the candidate to have a great, successful uh, experience at the locale that they're going to, and you want your client or, or the medical um, uh, practice or the hospital to have an amazing experience with the person that you place with them. Unlike sending so many different resumes to the hospital, let's say you hand select, and like you said, you sell that area to the potential candidate. And of course, you've got a remarkable track record of very powerfully and positively um, impacting so many healthcare providers with the right candidate. So let's talk about that a little bit because that's a real niche. That's a real sort of run to daylight sort of entrepreneurial spotlight that you have, Kelly, and being able to be a great matchmaker. So what is it about you and your staff that makes you so good at what you do? So, Andy, first, we sell people, okay? So, when you're selling people and services, we often, and the challenge of the job are the unpredictable things that people will do, and we're never going to get past those challenges. Um, When I talk about KD staffing, um, I'm very strong into, um, listen, um, you cannot expect your people to be successful unless you can set them up for success. Okay, so you will hear me talk a lot about recruitment as an art. Recruitment as an art is my own training program, um, whether we're training my own staff or I'm helping outside companies. Okay, Um, because some people, when they think of a recruiter, they think of uh, someone on the phone saying, oh, you got the job. Well, Andy, that is not the job. Okay, there's a lot of systems, processes. Um, You know, when I talk to my people um, and in recruitment as an art, we often talk about, uh, you know, Andy, people want to buy, but they don't want to be sold. Okay, so some of our people on the phone line, they're so quick to push a sell, push a sell that they forget something. We have somebody on the other side of the phone and it's a relationship. Okay, Um, and then I talk a lot about calendar is your brain. Um, There is no way we can take care of job interviews, prepping for interviews, um, onboarding, moving without our follow up. And then, oh, by the way, you've got to follow up. Use your calendar seven days a week. Wow, Kelly, you really have it all figured out. And this comes from your excellent experience and background as an entrepreneur. You know, obviously, I want to talk so much more about KD staffing, but of course, We want to talk about the book that you wrote because that's very, very interesting. So maybe you could share the title of the book and why that's so meaningful to you and all the people throughout the world who have read it. 
Okay, so we're talking about the international best-selling uh, book, Riding the Executive Roller Coaster Medical Staffing Cases. Cha-ching, um, it's the medical industry. Surprise, surprise. Uh, you know, Andy, that book has a lot of personalities and it tracks a lot of different readers um, on a business, legal, legal ethics. Um, um, why has that book won so many awards? Well, Andy, um, I, myself, my legal team, our litigation, our government work for 10 years. Of course, I fight and I continue to fight more fair laws in our industry. Um, we've got an industry that uses attorneys a little bit too much. And I'm an advocate for smoothing out the laws a little bit and ensuring that our recruiters, the people, are getting their paychecks, Andy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, on KD staffing, I have a small waiting list of people that want to work at my company because they know I'm going to pay them. What does that tell you? Um, and so the book is definitely, it's an inspirational testimonial because it is my life. Um, and it's my life story for 10 years. Um, but it's about the lawsuits that hit the medical industry and how bad can it get when people don't have knowledge on the employment laws. Um, but it's a book about falling down. And then, oh, by the way, let's rebuild and get bigger, better, stronger in the future. I love it so much, Kelly. Get bigger, better and stronger. You're an advocate for the entire space. You have so many years of experience and so many people count on you and lean on you with your experience and your background. Kelly, you know, at the dot-com magazine entrepreneur spotlight series, we always talk about companies culture. We talk about the founders lead the culture. So what is it about the culture of your company that makes it different than so many other staffing companies? Because the culture starts at the top. I would imagine it's very positive and very energetic, just like you, filled with a lot of great ideas, but also filled with the serious background that you have as well. So let's talk about corporate culture a little bit. How is important is corporate culture to KD staffing? Oh, you know, the first thing you learn as an entrepreneur is um, that do not expect the competition to help you. Um, whatever you create or self-create or the plans that you create, you're counting on yourself, okay? Um, if, you know, for KD staffing, um, we go above and beyond. We do have a lot of energy. Um, you know, yes, we're a little right over the top because my people will take calls seven days a week. I'm not asking them to work 12 hours on a Saturday, but I am asking them to go above and beyond and consider other people's schedules. Um, Andy, about six years ago, um, I changed my model, uh, KD staffing, to a hybrid model. Now, what does that mean? It means you got the staffing companies permanent that say, here you go. Here's your guy. Good luck. Goodbye. You got the travel. They stay with their people. Um, they pay, oh, uh, car allowances and travel and all that, right? Um, but they're also charging our clients about four times the rate. So here's the kicker, Andy. This is what I did, and it's a ching-ching for the clients, Okay. Um, I extended the services for KD staffing. Um, we do do a budgetable uh, temporary housing and some other price exceptions for our medical professionals. But Andy, my clients aren't charged. That comes out of my back end. OK, and so we extended our services and our medical professionals that are moving with their budgets. They really appreciate it. So we're kind of a new model. And I did it on purpose because we want to be different. Does that answer I love your question? It. Yeah, yeah, it really does. You know, I, I love it. And I hear it all the time. Obviously, you know, as a CEO, we need to be demanding of the people that work with us, but also we need to be um, very compassionate about their time. And we need to lead from the front, not from the behind. And that makes all the sense in the world with what you're doing. You know, Kelly, when I think about entrepreneurship and I think about like building great companies. And I think about taking one's background and experience and continuing to build, continuing to pivot, continuing to make something great and different for your clients. Obviously, I think of you because you've been able to do it with KD staffing so remarkably, remarkably well. What I'd like to do now, Kelly, is maybe move our conversation toward entrepreneurship a little bit because we have okay. entrepreneurs watching the show they're going to be watching you. You're, you know, a leader in medical staffing. You've built this beautiful hybrid model. Uh, you, 
you've been at at the business for many, many years. You're a best-selling author, and they might be saying to themselves, you know, has Kelly ever had a roadblock? Has she ever hit a pothole in the road, right? Ah. So, so let's talk about that. For the younger entrepreneurs watching the show that maybe are hitting a roadblock with their company, or maybe they're having a hill that they feel they can't get over right now, maybe you could share some thoughts to the younger entrepreneurs about what it takes to be a great entrepreneur and get through those roadblocks and potholes. Ah, I love that. And here we go. Um, So, you know, the first thing that I would have to say is that as an entrepreneur or a CEO, um, I recognize that, um, Andy, uh, in all areas, um, in some areas, I'm going to fail. Okay, so my biggest, what I like to push is in the areas that I need help, pay the right professionals to help you, okay? And it can be budgeted out, um, but, um, you know, I've seen a lot of people that they try to short, they, they, try, to, the, they try to short things and it, it doesn't work. So that is my, one of my biggest things, pay the right people. But the other thing is, is that I feel like um, I attend a lot of business networking events, um, public speaking, um, coaching, development, um, because you can take from other industries to a lot of knowledge and a lot of coaching. Because even as the entrepreneur, you're always wor- working on how do I get bigger, better, stronger. So I learn from other people, le- uh, industries, and ev- you know, or leaders in other industries, and we share knowledge. I love it. Okay. I the love other it. thing is, is that. Um, you know, you need to be a little bit more proactive. All right. Now I'm called the lady with the plan. You'll come up with one plan, Andy. I'll have six. Okay. But we're incredibly aggressive. So, um, you know, um, pre-plan, you know, come up with emergency plans and think outside the box. All right. That's what you need. You want to go over the top. You want to win all the sales awards. You're going to go above and beyond. You know, um, some people, they say the job is Monday through Friday, eight to f- four, eight to five or whatever. Um, probably the people out there that are that know better, they're going to do a little bit more, are going to be the ones that get all the awards. And by the way, hit goals. I love it so much, Kelly. And for the younger entrepreneurs watching the show, if you're having a tough time, rewind what Kelly just said, because it's really important. It definitely resonates. You know, you have to go above and beyond. And so many young entrepreneurs, Kelly, get so excited about their technology. They get so excited about their platform and their offering that sometimes they forget to talk about the customer. And for the younger entrepreneurs watching the show, remember what we talked about here, because the first thing Kelly talked about was the customer, how important the customer is to KD staffing. And what you just got from Kelly really was a mini Harvard MBA, everybody, because that's what they teach at Harvard. If you go to Harvard and you have a professor and you have students, the students are learning uh, through case studies about entrepreneurship. But here, entrepreneurs get all of that great experience on the ground and they learn by experience. And Kelly also mentioned something very valuable. Surround yourself with talented people. So Kelly, This leads me to my next question, because I know you're such a big believer in helping others. I mean, that's really the thing that's made you great and has made you a worldwide leader in your space. You know, you love to mentor people. You love to help people. You love so much to give a helping hand to people. Where did that come from? Why do you have such a passion about helping other people? Um, I don't know, Andy. I think I was born with it. (laughs) I'm the type of house that people have been knocking for 30, 40 years on my door when they have a problem. But you know what? In the matter of we are taking care of jobs, we do do a lot of job coaching. You know, I've had a life program, Andy, um, that has definitely and I've had it. I've had a life coach and a life program for 15 years and you will change your thinking. Okay, Um, I will do a lot of service work and service work is not. You don't run around and charge people for service work, or that's what I believe. You've got to give back to the world. Um, and a lot of people, they don't, they don't know that terminology. But um, the point is, is that, um, you know, when I am working and coaching with so many people, I have to attribute my life program, gratitude, positive thinking, 
How do you become a better person? Now, there are some years that I've said, I'm tired of being a better person. Why not somebody else try it? You know, you get annoyed. Um, but if you work hard enough on yourself and, um, and all the right stuff, then you can pass it to the world. And it does help with my relationships. We have a lot of long-term clients, um, uh, outside businesses, friendships, and um, a lot of long-term out there. Um, even in the job, Andy, um, I have to talk to people about start overs. What's a start over when you're miserable? Because it doesn't matter what the job is. We all have bad days or bad weeks. But do you have the proven ability to get up in the morning and say, whatever went wrong, let's start over and keep going? Because the grass is not always greener on the other side of the fence. I love it, Kelly, so much. And something that is very apparent in this interview and something I knew coming into the interview from having pre-conversations with you is your energy level. So let's talk about that because entrepreneurs are going to be watching the show and they're going to say to themselves, wow, I mean, I don't think I could even try and keep up with Kelly Christina's energy level. So where do you get all your energy from? What's, what's the secret to having that good, positive mental attitude? Well, Andy, I love my job. Okay. But more than that, I love life. Um, and, um, you're asking me, someone asked me if I just drink too much coffee. <laughs> Andy, I've always spent a lot of energy. You know, my first career um, was restaurant management and um, I was the boss. There's the bosses that manage and then there's the troubleshooters. You come in, you look at the problems, um, you help correct operations, you troubleshoot, you fix problems. OK, well, that career has rolled into my my second career. OK, um, but I do have a hospitality background. And Andy, I'm just, I don't know what it is. A lot of people say, Kelly, you just have a gift with people. And, uh, you know, whether we're talking about the poor middle class or the rich, I think we have 80% of wonderful people. And then we got the wows, <laughs> the wows that we deal with. Um, but I've always had it, Andy. I had two jobs in high school, okay? You know, in college, I had two jobs and my college in, in college, I was up writing training manuals for the restaurant industry. So I've been training teams for a very long time. And you know what? We've got some big personalities that come out of hospitality. I love it, Kelly. You know, it's very interesting. You have what I call a positivity bias. Even when you were talking about the 80-20 theory or the 20% of the people you called them, wow. I mean, that's sort of just looking at the world as a glass half full versus half empty, you're making lemonade out of lemons all the time. And I would imagine for entrepreneurs watching the show, something to take away from Kelly, besides your expert expertise at KD Staffing and what she's been able to do, and so many expert medical professionals she's been able to place and so many clients that have been with her throughout the years is you can learn that people want to do business with people that not only have an expertise, but have a great sort of vibe about them, a good energy about them. Someone that can look at things through a positive light, but aren't, um, but are also able to give it the straight way in which they see things. So in other words, while Kelly has this positive energy, if she sees something that's not right or sees something that she believes needs to, needs to be corrected, not only with her staff, but perhaps with her clients or the people who she's bringing to the clients, she's going to give them the straight talk. She's going to give them the straight look. And I think in business these days, Kelly, people really, really appreciate that. Now, what I want to do is I want to put you on the spot here a little bit, Kelly, because I know you're, you love that kind of thing. What is your why? You know, why does Kelly Christina get up in the morning? Because you're, we're watching and listening to you. We want to know what gets you going. And it seems to me you just wake up and you just go. But what's the why, the reason why you go? Wow, that is a loaded question. Why do I go in the morning? Um, you know, for about 15 years, um, about 15 years ago, I had to, Andy, get out of selfish thinking. What does selfish thinking mean? <laughs> And as a boss, sometimes you can have that know-it-all um, personality, you know, where you're not open to other people. Andy, I had to learn, and I think that when you wake up and you lose that selfish thinking, 
and you're able to have the ability to look around. You think, oh, you know, um, you know, I have the ability to write books because I've got a, a little bit of the more challenging, different lifestyle. Some people say I'm a best selling uh, life story. OK, but um, when you're living life like that, sometimes you can get into you feel sorry for yourself. You're Why, 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 why did this happen and everything? Andy, I had to learn. Listen, Kelly, if you can get out of yourself and listen to the other people, everybody else around you, they've got problems too. And oh, by the way, you can make a difference when you start listening and you start caring. And Andy, when you lose that selfish, there is a happiness. And maybe some of us call it a spiritual life. But money, money is not the primary. Um, yes, I'm somebody. I've always been very successful. I will always win those awards. But I'm also to tell you there are so many things in this world, peace, friendships, relationships, happiness, fun, that money can't buy. Money can't buy it. I love it so much, Kelly. You know, I'm so blessed and lucky to be able to speak to so many high profile and talented, talented CEOs and founders throughout the world. And the thing that really resonates is none of them start by talking about money. You know, it never starts with, I did this because of the money. It all starts with a different reason, like the reason that you just gave, because you wanted to give back. And by giving back, you get so much more in return in so many different ways, Kelly. And, you know, it's very apparent that you live your life in a compassionate way, uh, with a lot of kindness, and you understand the secret of business and entrepreneurship and running a great business. And it's very apparent to me, and I'm sure the people who watch the show, and I know that, you know, through the pandemic, and now that we're hopefully getting through it completely, or soon to be completely, I know that KD staffing is as busy as ever. And I know you're so um, busy helping so many people get placed. And I wanted to thank you so much for slicing some time out today. I had so many questions about not only the staffing business, but sort of the way in which you approach your life and the positive energy that you've become known for from your clients and throughout the world as a best-selling author as well. So Kelly, I wanted to thank you so much for coming on the Dotcom Magazine Entrepreneur Spotlight Series today. You are very refreshing and you're just a great spirit. And thank you for coming on the show. Oh my gosh, back at you, Andy. This has been a beautiful connection and I'm so happy that we met each other this year and I'm just w wishing you great success this year too. 